That is cool, man. All right, engines on. Okay, we're gonna nut ease her out. There it goes. That's so cool. Yeah, of course. There's a little pocket carrier now. About to become one of the most useful ships in the verse. All right, I'm I'm coming in on a target. I'm coming in on the ad. Whoa, this thing is fast, man. <laughs> Trying to get used to it is is pretty wild. Yeah, piece of cake. That uh, looks like a Mustang. It's missing something though. Let me start now. Move erratically. Boom. <laughs> oh, we got it. Oh, I might do some um, low flying here for a sec. Ooh, look at that oh. Excel. Yeah. Holy crap. I obviously can't keep up with you, but I'll fly along with you. Yeah, well, considering you're not on my UI, I'll never find you again. <laughs> nice. Star Citizen just got a very powerful new ship that is bound to open up all sorts of new gameplay opportunities. The Fury and the Fury MX are new snub fighters from a brand new manufacturer called Mirai. I got to test them out today. I had an absolute blast and I want to tell you everything you need to know about these tiny little ships and why you may want a few of them on hand for fleet operations. So what is a snub fighter exactly? Well, in Star Citizen's case, it's a very small fighter that's designed to be carried into battle. By giving up their quantum drives, these ships can be super tiny and thus fit into a large variety of ships. But that means they're incapable of using quantum to escape combat, so they're very much reliant on other ships to get around the verse, or perhaps be used as outpost defense or station defense ships where quantum isn't as necessary. And the the extremely compact size of the Fury allows many ships to expand their combat capabilities while carrying one. The Caterpillar hauling ship is supposed to be able to carry about 10 of these things, turning a fun cargo ship into a makeshift carrier. Currently, the community is testing to see just exactly how many ships you can fit these inside of, and it seems like pretty much most ships that can fit an Ursa rover can definitely fit at least one Fury, which means a lot of ships can carry one of these. Now, the base Fury model carries four size 2 repeaters and four size 2 missiles, while the Fury MX is absolutely loaded to the brim with missiles. It has 12 size 2 missiles and eight size 1 missiles, but it also doesn't have any guns. I think it's actually the only ship in the game right now that has missiles but no guns to go with it, which is pretty interesting and it looks crazy with so many missiles on such a small ship. Visually, the Fury looks like what would happen if a TIE Interceptor had a baby with the red tail from Cowboy Bebop. It's basically a cockpit strapped to weapons and engines and not much else. Some people even make the comparison to a flying turret like you might see on a hammerhead. Now I personally love the look of them and the visibility while flying is an absolute delight. It's got minimal UI on the interior just letting you absorb the environment and track your targets. A similar design approach that was used in the Scorpius and I'm really liking that with the fighters. We don't need to be staring at tons of panels all the time. We need to be tracking targets and taking in the explosions. Now the MX also has a really cool blast shield that comes down when you press a button in the cockpit. I don't exactly know how this will physically improve the armor of the ship, but it sure does look cool and it borrows some of that Tavarin hollow screen tech that I've really enjoyed. Now the four thrusters also make use of Xion tech as they rotate around providing incredible agility in many different directions. And the acceleration on the Fury is absolutely insane. 20 kilometer distance to your target is absolutely nothing. In space, these guys can get up to 1250 meters per second in no time. I'm surprised they didn't actually black out flying one yet, though I did crash one. That planet honestly came out of nowhere. Now the base Fury will probably appeal to most players with the size 2 repeaters. It's definitely the most firepower that I've seen on a ship of this size. For comparison, the other snub fighter, the Archimedes, has four size 1 weapons. Though the difference in DPS is actually marginal, and many would argue that the Archimedes or Merlin is a better dogfighter for its small profile while aiming at a target and a few other reasons. Now there are some significant downsides to the Fury, aside from the obvious 
no quantum drive aspect, the ship has very little hydrogen fuel, certainly not enough to stay in a dogfight for a long period of time, let alone a massive fleet battle. There's many PvP dogfights that I've been in that drain the fuel of a typical light fighter, and had I been in a fury, I certainly would have run out of fuel well before finishing the fight, which is not how you want to end an epic dogfight. And considering that you cannot refuel these ships in other ship hangar bays yet, you are pretty much reliant on landing at a base or using the Starfarer to get more fuel, which you will need to do frequently, and it's a chore. Hopefully refueling these inside of a Carrick or 890 jump ship bay will become a thing down the road, and also hopefully the devs expand the fuel capacity a bit so that they can be used in longer battles and longer patrol periods. They're very cool little patrol ships and escort ships, they just don't quite have enough fuel to do it effectively. As it stands, I would imagine they're going to make really fun gank fighters where somebody's coming up to a cargo ship to maybe pirate it and like three or four of these fly out of there and take out the pirate ship. But if that ship takes them on a chase, well, all of a sudden the Fury's fuel limitations become an issue. Now the profile for the ship looks really cool, but they also make them kind of fat little targets. This could be an issue for survivability. You'll definitely want to rely on the directional thrusters to stay out of your opponent's firing arc as best as possible. They are super maneuverable, so you're going to need to take advantage of that, which means, generally speaking, a higher skill level to use effectively. Especially since these only have one size 1 shield, it doesn't give them a ton of survivability once they actually start taking shots. Now, from an in-universe perspective, I absolutely love the ship. It makes a lot of sense as an inexpensive short-range fighter craft. With the upcoming towns and settlements in the 3.2 patch, it would be neat to see a small group of these being used for local defense forces or even as police craft around stations or larger cities. However, for the here and now, there really isn't a big reason to use these aside from creating your own adventures or narratives within Star Citizen. From a from a practical standpoint, most light fighters with a quantum drive are going to be way more useful than one of these. That said, if you really enjoy being a fighter pilot, well, the bigger systems like Pyro, which are coming to the game hopefully soon, are going to offer destinations that may be extremely far away, possibly too far for light fighters to actually reach with their limited quantum drives. It'll likely make more sense to start bringing bigger ships that have longer quantum ranges with snub fighters in their base or cargo hangers. A Gladius light fighter has a huge profile and is terrible for trying to fit into other ships in the game. And even the biggest ship in the verse currently, the 890 Jump, can only carry a single light craft with it. But with a Fury, you can start cramming eight or more of these into Caterpillars, Hercules, Carex, 890s, and a ton of other smaller ships. I didn't actually test this, but based on how it fit in the back of a Corsair, I'm pretty sure you can fit two of these in the cargo bay. And the Valkyrie can even carry one of these. It's such a fun little ship to fly without any great reason to fly one. Yet, I hope we start to see more ground and local based combat missions where once you're at an outpost, you can take on local defense missions where snub fighters might actually make for a good air to ground or short range combat vehicle. Anyway, these are of course on sale now, though $50 is a bit of a steep price point for something without a quantum drive or real gameplay loop. I hope you guys enjoyed this overview of the new Fury and let me know if you've been testing them out and what you think about them. Next, check out my Scorpion review, a truly fantastic heavy fighter. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.